One single map of Counter-Strike left for our playoffs here. Our first day in the Lanxess Arena and still the guys stay. It was a 9 a.m. start and listen to this. They're still hanging out here in Cologne. The guys are wild. The signs are fantastic. There's an optic fan corner over here. It's day one. People are supposed to have been working, but they're here enjoying the video games and having a blast alongside myself. One map to go. Optic started the upset and they seem to have besotted the German crowd now. I'm even seeing an American flag over there. This is going to be wild. One map, it's Cobble. And before we do that, we're going to take a little look. Taco spoke to our interviewers earlier. When we accepted the invite to play ESL Cologne, uh, we knew that Cologne is always magic, at least for us. Uh, last year was insane. And of course, we want to, to win the group stage. We want to go to the playoffs so we can see the crowd again. The practice was really fine for us because SK's office is at Cologne, so it's a really good thing for us. So we, we spent this last week uh, practicing a lot against the European teams. I think we are in a really good shape. We came from a tournament that uh, were the best teams in the world and we won. Uh, even we won the last tournament, it's not enough for us. Uh, we want more, we want to win ESL Cologne once again. Everyone that we go that's going to play against us, we are afraid to play against us, so it's a really good point. And the downside is that uh, there's a lot of good teams. So with 16 teams, uh, really good teams, everything is possible. Uh, even the group stage, best of ones, no one can expect anything. We will do our best to win the tournament. Uh, of course, a major is a major, but Yasuo Cologne, like I said, something magic. Taco, something magic, because I'm here now. Um, I just got to meet the uh, Lanxess crowd, and I tell you what, I, it, what time is it? I don't even have my watch on. It's like 10.15. 10.15, yeah. you, you're keeping, keeping clocks in. 10.15, they're still sticking around. Excuse me. <laughs> like I said, it's 10.15. <laughs> uh, they're still hanging around. They're still, uh, they've, they've actually chosen Optic. Everyone loves an underdog, and so far, admittedly, the boys here on the desk, YNK and Sponge, have admitted Optic's chances look slim despite a spectacular first map. Mirage of all maps, something that they forged their dynasty honor, at least Fallen did, and now we stand to talk a little bit about Cobblestone. Will it be the wobbly cobble? What do you, th what do you say, Yanko? I think they're really making you earn your pay at this event, Alex. That was like some exercise. Ride, that was crowd. a hundred meter walk. You even need to entertain the casters. <laughs> but talking about cobble, yeah, I think it's obvious that the map in itself doesn't really matter as much, at least in, in this particular game. Because as you saw, like in the, in the opening map, Mirage, it was uh, favorable for SK, but Opti coming in prepared, coming out with a lot of aggression. The problem is, on a map like Cobble, you don't really have that much room for city-sided sure. aggression. So you would expect SK to be able to close out the game here. Something that might go Optic's way is, Phelps on this map, more so than some of the others, is on the opposite side of the team, for example. When they focus towards the B-bomb side, he can be sometimes all the way out in A-holes. Sure. And if the execute doesn't go right, for SK, Phelps finds himself in a situation where he can't do anything to help the team win the round. Gets a little lost, perhaps. I mean, this is something that we can safely assume, right? SK are human beings, and it's likely, Chad, that we can expect some maps to be a little stronger with the integration than others, despite the, the passage of time. Yeah, for sure. You know, I, I think this has historically been a pretty good map for SK, right? It's been one that's definitely in the top five of their map pool, and maybe even the top three at certain points uh, throughout the, their time. But mm. uh, as I mention all the time, I was on the receiving end of a 16-0 from uh, these guys on this How map. How did it feel? Uh, Jason summed it up nicely before with the with the terminology that <laughs> I he, understand. he he loved to use from me. But uh, it, it's not much fun, and to go the, the biggest thing is you just feel like you can't stop them. And I think one of the best mm. things SK do is is get that drop control on the T yeah. side. They don't really have any dramas getting in there. They are one of the first teams I saw getting fallen in there with the AWP to pick from the Oof. drop room towards the platform. Right, uh, that's where I think Optics battle needs to be won. They need to be able to make sure, hey, this isn't a free part of the map. And if it is, what contingencies do they have in plan, sure. uh, in place to stop them? I mean, otherwise the pain train has no brakes. That's something you've got to watch out for. Absolutely. SK Gaming versus Opti. They are already getting ready, getting comfortable. And I think it's very interesting when you talk about just how scary SK can be on a map. And Optic, they do have an essence of no fear about them. I don't think at any point they've had a huddle saying, come on, boys, got to wrap this up now. And more of a case of... We, we beat them on Plan the for fun right now. Yeah, yeah, and I think that that is an aura that is contagious both here at the desk, in the crowd, and, and even at home. I think they they realize that they've got nothing to lose, obviously, in this matchup. And, you know, you win Mirage, the, your opponent's map, and you're kind of hyped for cash. Okay, this is our pick. We can actually beat them. 
then you get crushed and now you should go back to the style hey we're the underdogs yeah. here no one expects us no one expected us to get this far definitely no one expects us to beat sk let's just try and yeah. have fun in that sense it might be even beneficial for optic to start on the t side sure. because they can you know dictate the pace of the game they can have some fun and if things go their way individually if they're on point they might even have a very very strong half what side did sk start on it's knife so I'm just going to guess. They start on the CT side, so I'd like to bet CT all. Um, yeah, and of course, bring reasonable. Thank you, you got me. <laughs> it's Betway. And of course, those are the odds. And SK, clear favorites in this one, given Optic just a little bit more of an edge than they did initially after mm. their performance on Mirage. But yes, doubt, seeds of doubt have been sown by the Brazilians on that second map. And now we just have to sit back, relax, because just one. One more map of Counter-Strike, and we'll have those quarterfinals locked in, or rather completed, and semifinals will be going down tomorrow. It's going to be a blast, and to guide you through, just one more game, one more map of Counter-Strike. Will Optic truly get this upset, or will SK stand vigilant and get versus FaZe tomorrow? We'll find out with Moses and Fancy. We are going to find out now. It's the final map. It's Cobblestone between Optic and SK Gaming. Valiant attempts on both maps from either side, but this is what it comes down to. Yes, one more map, and now no matter how unlikely it seems, anything can happen here in this third one. The big thing for Optic is, I mean, we've seen they're able to compete, they're able to keep up with the SK side, it's just that they need to give themselves a chance in the second half, don't they? That that cash, you could see the ability in the defense, you just, there just wasn't enough. Optic have to do some work in this first half, starting on the CT side as well. Heavy play, preventing any kind of pressure coming from drop zone. Three players for Optic Gaming here. This could be so deadly. Smoke is out. That's going to block off Rush. Down to just two, but Mixwell hits an insane shot. There, here comes the stack. They all pounce through. Creative from Optic, and it works perfectly. Taco's made his way out, but Tarek is on point, and that is a very quick, very convincing pistol round from Optic. So their top secret new coach surely has got them ready for this. You, you know what SK do. It, it's a matter of how do you deal with it, right? They're not going to change how they play for you. So how do you handle coming into this one? How prepared are you for this, Optic Gaming? You've got the crowd behind you somehow. These, these guys have suddenly become big Optic fans. I think the idea of free t-shirts has got them rowdy. The beers have started to really kick it. There they are, yeah. Free stuff. Gets anyone going. SK, though, with a bit of a buy up here. Tech 9's galore. Double stack towards long, though. Could hinder the approach unless they get completely mowed down. But the nades are good. Hazed. Hampering the approach, but Danger is living up to its name. Yep, Cold Zero's right here with the CZ, but he can't connect the shots. Running low on ammunition as well. Not committing forward, actually does get hazed. The very last bullet, the drive-by, and there's Phelps. They outstay their welcome at three on three. We, or, excuse me, a four on three. And we saw this previously on cash. Those kinds of mistakes can be punished by SK, and frequently they will. This defense gets very spread out at the moment. Naf just watching drop. He's in connector. Tarek over towards the B bomb site and rush at A. This is going to be so difficult. Yeah, it is going to get a little bit interesting. As Naf waits by the door. Not sure yet. As Optic did, excuse me, SK did just hit the break. So just wait and see if there's a move back because the CTs would want to bring him back to that 4v4 situation. There's not any really aggressive play. Naf is still being very attempted, but Rush is the one to really keep this in check. But he's a little worried about long, hence why Naf is now adjusting around. Waiting for a player to peak. 38 seconds. They're going to have to make their move soon. Fallen is a smoke as well. So Naf's going to have a decision to make because likely that smoke drops right into that door and he has to decide if he wants to push out or if he wants to fall back behind it. And he chooses to fall back behind it. That isolates Rush. He needs to get this first kill. It took way, way too long. Phelps feels confidence despite low HP. Naf out in the open, misses a shot. And that's it. That's exactly what happens. Tarek all of a sudden in a one on three. And that's a quick kill from Cold Zero. <laughs> that's pretty nice, isn't it? Good work from SK. No matter what the odds are, they get back into it, don't they? It's it's just so, so good. It was a little bit chaotic on long at the start. Lots of damage back and forth, and then there you have it. The shot that just didn't seem to land cleanly enough for Rush. Pretty much, I, I wouldn't say be, you know, cost them all around, but the next couple of players there for SK were low on HP. You could have maybe had a little more on that. That first shot just did not come through clean enough. Yeah, back down to just pistols, no armor on the optic side of things. One flashbang. That's going to be unhazed over towards long A. Very cautious approach for the SK side. Starting to probe just a little bit. You see Fur on his 
Mac 10, as we so frequently do, and he's usually the aggressor. Nade does great work. Rush just has to bail out. He's got a 5-7, but only 14 HP. He's just got to hide. Hope they don't check his corner, and SK now has complete control of drop. I know that they like going for this. A little bit of a spray from fur. Gotta be careful. Altic do have three players here, pretty stacked up as well, so... SK don't want to allow guns to be taken away. It's, it's they're doing okay so far, though. Yeah, and Fur's just gonna mop this up, isn't he? Three quick headshots. If you're in first position as well and you're peeking out a drop and you see one player just kind of shoulder peeking that corner, you just, that, that feels like a bait. You know exactly what's happening. So it's smart on him to just fall back, not commit to it. SK survive with all five players alive. Yeah, great for the money system for them. Building this up so, so well. And I wonder if they can continue it this cleanly. I'm not sure if it can be achieved so easily. And there will be a bit of a fight back, I can imagine, from Optic sooner rather than later. But for now, if we go the round, just a nade. Well, two nades and a two couple nades, of yeah. P250s. Naf, Naf and Russian, I think they wanted the double nade drop, but Naf's a little late getting in there. They haven't thrown him out quite yet. There's one. And actually, it would have been... Oh, there's the second one. A little bit deeper. That works out perfectly. It looked a little bit sloppy there, but they make it work. Taco's challenging and great, great damage onto the SK side. They haven't gained anything for it. Fighting in the flames is Naf before he falls. And even Taco's going to clean some things up. So at some point. <laughs> he really it's coming. wants this kill. It's coming, I promise you. <laughs> Jason, no, nah, no, nah, he's off. He heard what you said. He didn't before the Reddit threads made. But you know what? Phelps is there. Phelps will save the day. He saw the trouble afoot with everyone else. He's like, don't worry, boys. I'll pile in. Mix well, though. P250. Couple of possibilities of getting damage done, but the problem is that they're sat back already. Fur and Taco fall away from this. They don't really want to be the ones to have to risk themselves. Fallen and Phelps more than capable of controlling this now. Yeah, not really a whole lot for Mixwell to do, just praying for a gun, but the SMGs on the SK side are just so low. Fur at 19, Taco at 16. They have no reason to chase, and obviously no reason to risk the M4 or the AK-47. So SK is going to be happy with this plant and this win. Mixwell's going to find nothing. He'll fall back towards T-spawn. So it's going to be 3-1. Optic win the pistol round, but a blunder, a couple blunders on the second round. And this is the situation they find themselves in. They'll have a strong buy, though. Nice Phelps taking out Mixwell. Meanwhile, the money's been building very, very nicely. SMG's building up great money on this T-side for SK. What is happening out there? Just it's like they, they're just that. going feral, you know, yeah. just just everyone's losing their minds. It's gone to that point in the day. Somehow Optic won a map against SK and it's just, you know, we all just get a little bit weird. The simulation is in full force. Don't get Anders started, please. He's, be, he's been calm recently. <laughs> no, he hasn't. <laughs> he's been calmer. However, three to one, SK are coming to this all guns are blazing. Bob Zero vying for early play here, so we're going to go up and over, maybe towards... Door or over towards Speedway. Full hit, about to be shaped. Tarek waits with the molly, but where are you going to put that down? Everything's smoked. Does find a place for it in the end. Russian Naf yet to feel the presence from SK making the hit. They still wait. SK hindered. We have that quick hit off the back. A little bit of utility played in. A couple of flashes. Tarek has a look, but he has to be careful. Take a peek behind that flashbang. His footsteps likely heard by Taco. This is a dangerous position to be in if you're Tarek. Very, very aggressive. Jiggle peeking, trying to find this peak, but the attack is going to be towards drop zone. That Molotov is going to help Fur get it. Control to SK. No smokes left, but they do have three Molotovs. It worries me why there's still three players. Well, Naf is watching quite passively towards window, I guess. That's a tough shot to hit, though, if they come straight It really is. Yeah. It, you might get one, but the, the second's going to make it through. And Tarek is very alone. Rush isn't exactly there to be able to help him because he's worried about drop. It's a very strange hold coming from Optic, but Tarek does succeed. But he eventually gets overwhelmed, and Rush himself is a little confused. And SK just pulling the strings everywhere. Such a concise hit. Optic left wondering what went wrong, but still, the boost's going to come in. The bomb's not down yet, and that's going to slow it down as well. Oh, these flashbangs are great from SK. It's a flashbang that distracts Rush long enough for a player to come out. Drop and Mixwell with a nade in his hand can do nothing. Plant going down now, but he's going to lose his life. Cold Zera pounces at the right moment. Oh, oh. Mixwell. Nice little curve, and he gets away even more. He's staying alive this whole time, but he still has to fight his way out, doesn't he? He knows he can't just book it and run. He's being surrounded. He's being hunted. That's a nice shot out of midair. 
But Fallen's behind. That one's gonna be easy. If he'd made it away, I would like the Foon music just to start playing. You know yeah. what I mean? Just just get it going. Uh, to be fair, being able to get out of that when Caldera was so close is damn impressive. Damn, damn impressive. 4-1, though, is a good scoreline for SK. Yeah, and the key to Optic is you can't let the first half slip away like you did on Cash. You have to put up enough of a fight to, to have some kind of cushion in the second half, something to stand on. This is going to be tough, though. I mean, this is where, yeah, the first game is great, but now, you, I mean, you when they start believing as well that they can win, then it just adds more and more pressure onto them. Yes, they're playing loose. Yes, they're playing because they have nothing to lose. But it still puts a lot of pressure on you. So many things need an answer to that Optic need to find pretty quickly. One, how to control drop if they want to. How do they vie for this? How do they control that B-side? Because they, they, they haven't really won anywhere yet. Yeah, exactly. I mean, well, the, the time they did it was pistol round, right? When they had three players there. Had a great stack, some spectacular yeah. shots. But ever since then, SK's had it whenever they've wanted it. Even Taco probing over towards that B bomb site, but not swinging out wide. There's, there's a huge stack here. Three players, essentially, in a line on that statue on the boost. And Taco stops just short of being seen. Again, drop control, and you have to imagine it's going to be Fur with this MAC-10 leads the way. There's Taco spotting out one, and that's that's the stack going to full effect. They all peak at the same time. Even Fur's dropped. Now it's Cold Zara's turn to come up. He's got one. They don't have to be too aggressive on this, but they know eventually the Optic guys are just going to peek into it. Still 40 seconds left. Yep, he's pulling himself back towards the door so he can maybe support quicker than previously mentioned. If they try and go through windows, well, he can at least spot it, but... I doubt he's going to be able to put much of a fight up. He does only have a 5-7. Pistols are pretty strong, but tricky. Oh, but so is that angle. It's so obnoxious to play against. Information spotted. Here comes Fall and here comes Coldzera. This could be the end of the fun, but look at the time. 15 seconds, a little bit of hindrance anywhere. And this could be problematic, and Naf could be doing just that. He waits for his moment to pounce, and it's perfect. He's bought time, seven seconds. He just needs to play it out well, and now Hazed, surely. Oh, he's got it in time. Fallen's there. He's got the plot, but quickly enough, Hayes makes it back to the site. <laughs> I think everyone wants an upset. Look at that. Everyone goes wild. SK really played themselves into a tough spot. They had drop control, but they never really did anything with it, and they eventually just get boxed in, don't they? As the time runs out, 20 seconds left. Aggression towards B platform. Optic steal one back. It's a return favor for the second round. Now a double up setup right off the bat. I never thought I'd hear a German crowd so much. Let's go Optic. Yeah. They're loving it. The green wall, baby. Considering SK are previous champions in this arena. Yeah. They don't seem to care. <laughs> they just, they love a good, good underdog story. And I, I do as well. I'm curious to see when we see a little bit more play coming out from Optic in an attempt maybe to hinder SK early game. But as this is incredibly tough to do on Cobble. There's very few ways to do it. I think you can look at North maybe with their B play with the deeper smokes allowing Cajun B to play up towards Plat a little bit more consistently. But again, it doesn't always work when you're playing against the likes of SK. You have to come in with a very succinct game plan, but still. Double AWP could be a new look for them. This could give them a new lease of life. You know, we said, uh, we said we saw them after map one after they had lost, and SK, I mean, they looked all business. Mm. No laughing, no smiling. And they returned the favor on cash, but I dare say they looked a little bit stressed out after that round loss from Optic there. I said, though, if you're SK, you have everything to lose, right? Optic, they, they're not meant to win these games. They're not meant to make it to the semifinals. And, you know, you're not meant to beat some of the previous champions as you're one of those you know, teams who just kind of surprise everyone. And it's brilliant to watch. But for SK, it's their place in the semifinals that they're vying for. They, they need that for themselves. And here's Tarek. And I like this. Flash is great, though from SK, forcing him off the angle and a quick hit to follow. Now he's in no man's land, needs to back away, flashed again. There's three players out. Can he line him up and knock him down? Already Fur is to fall, but he's looking for more. But Mixwell is there in support as well. This is good positioning from Optic, but SK still have a step towards the site. But Mixwell with the big no. Two players remain, make it one. And the Orps find their targets. That round is all Nath. His positioning in the chicken coop basically drew a line on that bomb site where where SK just did not want to cross it. They just stopped cold right in front of Tarek. Mixwell is able to get the rotate in time, and Fallen doesn't like that whatsoever. He calls a pause immediately. You cannot have the whole team stop in that kind of a situation with that surrounding. That's when those ops ring true. Mixwell is massive on the rotation. Yeah, very quick, very precise. You feel that SK, if they maybe had a, a late lurk towards A, yeah, you always wonder what they're going to bring out now, because they've, they've set the marker that, yeah, we like B, we're good at taking it. Okay, we had a mistake there. 
But then in the back of the mind, if we hit A now, does that catch up to Gout? Are they already predicting this? This is the back and forth mental game that starts to really unfold. This has been a pretty conservative, like measured, very respectful offense out of SK Gaming. Very slow paced, not wanting to take too many risks, not wanting to be too aggressive to start these rounds out. And Optic is certainly getting comfortable in it. I imagine that changes in the next like full buy round. We have a little bit of an investment this round from SK, but, uh, but moving forward, I think you know, SK is going to go a little bit faster against those double ops. Try and get into the bomb sites. Try and take them over before the second op can rotate over. And actually, if they wanted to do it this round, I mean, you think the Tech Nines, the UMPs, it's perfect for that kind of a style, isn't it? Make it hurt. Let's see if SK can do it. Rush could be on the receiving end of a whole lot of pain. Oh, he can rise to the occasion. Two kills. We'll keep them in good stead for now, but Cold Zero has succeeded and unleashed himself towards B. Now, Tarek. Now. Having to handle it, but Naf is there again. Not holding Coop this time. On stat, doing just as well as Tarek. Over by Coop. Phelps working his way around, looking for an opportunity, but he gets spotted. Tarek turns attention, but it might leave room for Fallen, but no. There's a player quickly there. Naf again. He was one who was a little quieter on cash in comparison to the first map, and a shutdown for Optic, who brought it back to 4-4. This is great. What a hold from Rush. The opening two kills coming through smokes. It can be so tricky, but he handles it very, very well. Stands his ground. Two kills, and you've kind of taken the danger out of this attack midair as well. Flashbang streaming in. Coldzera finally trades, but a well-timed flashbang from the B defenders also. It, it just pretty much isolates Cold. He goes for the attack on a statue, and he's all alone. Phelps can't help trade, neither can Fallen. And Optic, I mean, Rush may be thinking this is going to be a save. He's got an SMG. A little bit of a tricky situation, I guess, to read since there was a force up in that last round. Maybe Optic saying, okay, their money is pretty much gone if they're just buying Tech Nines and UMPs, but it was just half investment, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, this could be scary for Optic. The other four are pretty well set. They still got the double orb, but it's just holding drop. Again, I guess the SMG could do well, but Taco's going to punish Tarek. You don't get to do that every single time. And there's already that probe already beginning towards A as well. Phelps and Fallen getting some room to work. Taco, Cold Zera. And Fur still playing over by B. They've, they've split the defense. It's so hard to hold this map without you know the right amount of players on the side at any given moment. Yeah. Tarek likely going to be a little bit stressed out after that doesn't deal the killing blow as well. SK, oh there it is. Fallen and Phelps simultaneously kills across the map. A bomb site is open. I don't even think Rush can challenge us. Definitely not with an SMG. He's just going to have to fall away, go back towards the B platform, try and get the M4 that Naf traded over. Save these weapons. Cold Zera, his entire job for the rest of this round is to prevent that from happening. Here he goes, begins. And of course he gets it. So potent. Naf, though, trying to keep hold of the AWP. Recovered from Tarek, who suffered that you know, rather deadly blow earlier. Just got completely outdone. Bomb waiting to go down, ensuring that SK can hunt. But Fur, look at this. Ring, a ring, a roses. Naf finds him. No way, Naf. Don't you dare. Oh my god, this is this is scary times, Naf. you got four more players. What are you up to? What's the plan here? That's it, I guess. Not a bad idea. He knows after his, uh, you know, he knows that he's been spotted out. He knows they're on the hunt for the gun. So he just says, I'll go right back towards the bomb site. Maybe he can look. If he, hits that, if he hits that first flick when he peeks out, then it's a one-on-one. -on -one. Maybe he can try and, you know, sneak the defuse in. Maybe. Since the other two players, that has to be the only thought process. Otherwise, Maybe why not? Why even take that first shot and connector? Why not let just just let Fur go? Either way, 5-4 SKs regained control of this half. Another great buy for the Optic side, though. They're pretty much depleted of cash. Four players under $500 in this round. Fallen standing in the flames. Mixwell's not going to give him a shot. No. Fallen and Phelps, though, the de deadly duo. They, they succeeded here before. This time, not going to have such luck. Hayes through the smoke. Connects towards Phelps, but Fallen isn't stopping. Of course. Of course this is the play. God. Poor Hayes, poor Mixwell, no idea what's happening. Fallen can deny everything as well. This is so awkward to play against. But again, it could all go wrong for him very quickly as well. If you just get caught in the wrong spot at the wrong time, someone just checks a, a weird angle. But Fallen now, here's it. He knows what's happening. And a great strike at the right time. He's going to hinder the rotate. They can go anywhere they want. He can just stop them from even coming back towards A. He leaves it all on Hayes. It's crazy to me how Mixwell didn't even think that was a possibility. No smoke down there as well, just running across mid. It could have been a pick from below. Either way, fall in that great positioning. Risk and reward, and the reward comes out on top this time. Smokes, Molotovs, all the choke points. 
All the fun stuff if you're an SK fan, and it's already a save call for Optic before the bomb even gets planted. They know they can't get back into this bomb site. Man disadvantage, not a whole lot of utility as well. Great, great round from Fall, and pretty much winning it single-handedly. And I like this adjustment from SK. They, they still have presence by B, they still have presence by drop, but they are working A this time, and it's working way better for them. They had succeeded at B before as well. They, you know, they took that kill towards Tarek, but they still ended up on A, and it's, it's looking really well constructed. And there's that kind of game change that you expect from SK that they can always go to. But I'm wondering, when's that timeout for Optic? If they're starting to feel, all right, we're being a little outdone here, maybe time to consider what our options are. This is a prime time for it. Yeah, I was going to say, if I'm if I'm an Optic coach or if I'm an Optic player, I'm calling a timeout right after this round because with these weapons, as long as they keep all three of them, they'll be able to buy... They'll be able to drop some weapons over and make this doable, right? But this is the last one. You know, you have to get on, you have to start winning pretty soon. So obviously you want this one to be the plan. You want to make sure everyone knows what they're doing, where they're playing, what they're watching out for. It's not going to come in. Six to four, plenty of money building up on the SK side as well. It's complete opposites. Yeah, SK starting to really get into their stride here. They can see those games waiting for them. Just a moment's time in the semi-finals. Mixwell going to try and make something happen early, but can't quite connect the shot as he'd like. I'll have to fall off this. This is a little bit more slower paced again. Two players towards drop for SK, two towards platform, and it's going to be drop control. Not quite yet, as they haven't actually fallen down. Faking the jump a little bit. Sound Q trying to get someone to peek, but Rush is smoked off. He's not going to do it. This has pulled a little bit of attention from Naf over towards his side of drop, just because Rush had, doesn't have the information. So got to be making him feel a little bit nervous. Flashed in those seas, no one there first, still they, succeeds. They baited that play out from Optic that whole time. All the fake jumping that Fur was doing to simulate dropping down. All the utility as well, and finally gets baited back in, and Rush is completely blind. Straight up stone cold outplay from SK. God, Tarek is about to feel <laughs> nothing nice. Uh, five players about to pinch towards. Three to the right, two to the left. Nine bullets. Doesn't really matter, does it? You do good damage, I'll give you that. I'll give you some credit. But in the day, SK showing so much power here. This is this is the SK you expect to a degree, where it's just clean, it's smart, it's good CS. And they've done it a, a multiple ways, right? Like the previous round is the individual performance from Fallen. This time it's just pure cerebral from Fur, faking everything, wanting them to do that entire flash peak play. And then as soon as the flash comes in, it's him and Cold Zero ready to punish anyone who swings wide in. That's great stuff. That's why SK is so difficult to beat. Mixwell just has to save this AWP. Optic getting outplayed in these recent rounds. Not looking great. Next is going to be a save for them. They'll only have this AWP to toy with. And Optic, I don't know how much you have to go to here. I don't know where your strengths lay on this map against a team of SK's caliber. I don't, I don't know if there are any at this point. You've done well. You've got four rounds. You need more. SK starting to warm into the game, starting to feel it, starting to get the shots landing, and there's the pause eventually. It took a while, <laughs> and now they only have an open, what, maxing at 3k on the rest of the players, such yeah, as Yeah, they, they can't do much. Timeout yeah. is going to come out, and, and you, you wonder if that's going to be something for maybe they do invest just a little bit, like half. They have three-round losing bonus after this. If they lose this one, they'll have four, so they can invest maybe a little bit of money into it if they want to upgrade a couple pistols or maybe just buy some utility to help support Mixwell. I think more than likely this is for the next gun round. But definitely in this, if you're Optic Gaming, you use Mixwell as the tip of the spear. You make sure he's taking the initial fight. You're making sure you have the utility, everything you can to let him fall back and survive and rotate elsewhere on the map. But Really, I mean, the, the persistent problem throughout this half for Optic is controlling drop zone. They haven't been able to do it this whole time. Control drop, control the game. Maybe not that simple, but <laughs> for now it's a good step in the right direction here. Uh, certainly uh, needed at this point, because they're winning even if they go B, if they go A, they always seem to have drop control, and they can build off the back of it wherever they want. 4-1 play coming out, Mixwell joining them over by B. Looks like he wants to get aggressive up towards Broken Wall. Not going to win any duels. And SK. <laughs> Look at this. Another just change-up of tactics entirely. Four players walking up mid. The smoke blocks all of Hay's information. He's in for a wild surprise when he turns this corner. And that's an easy kill. Yeah, great. Great approach from SK. 
maybe I don't know if they're expecting the B stack, but just a new look. Never never making it easy Ooh. for the opponents. But Cold Zero didn't expect that angle from Naf. That's a gun and that's a quick dash out of there. Yeah, he he ran like the wind, didn't he? <laughs> he doesn't want anything to do with anyone at that bomb site. So now it's use these two pistols. Naf and Mixwell do everything you can to save those guns. The pistols support them. Make sure the hunt can't be successful. And with that op, I mean, especially with that op, the Mixwell is on B platform, Tarek's up close, so he's there to keep space between them, allow Mixwell time to maybe take a shot and go for a second as well. Naf is in chicken coop, Rush is there to create space as well towards drop zone, so they should be able to keep these weapons. I highly doubt with how fast this call came in from Optic that SK even goes for the hunt. No. Bomb's going to tick through, and SK will get themselves to eight rounds. One closer to being... In those semi-finals, not too far away now for them. A tough start, a surprising one, but it seems to merely just light the fire underneath them and make them go that little bit harder in this map. Cash was very strong. There was a little bit of a resurgence in the end from Optic, but not anywhere to the degree you'd see them winning out of the game. Now, it, it, it was a more even playing field to a degree. You come in with a fresh map. Optic, sure, they've got four rounds, but SK claiming eight and looking very good at it. That's, that's the more condemning thing here is that SK looks strong. That's a DJ joke for sure. Just highbrow. Listen, I was about to get us excited because this is the first buy round. It's the double up setup back in the hands of Optic. This is a critical round if Optic wants to make a comeback in this half. Already they're down one. Little unfortunate there, but that's what Fallen does. And now it's Hayes' turn, and he's going to go right for it. But that's a, that's a bit, it seemed a bit crazy, didn't it? I can't be the only one. No. <laughs> <laughs> didn't feel great to watch that. Um, it was like a lamb willingly jumping into the slaughter, like, this will be great. And it happened so quick. There's not even time to rotate. No one else from Optic has moved. Like, it's just shell shock. They're just like, all right, well, <laughs> that's what the timeout was for. We got the double ops that we wanted, guys. And within 30 seconds, both our defenders are lost. We don't even have time to move. We don't even have time to rotate. This is getting a little bit brutal, isn't it? Yeah. SK are starting to show up a little bit more and more. They're, they're being forced to bring out a good game. That's something I didn't necessarily expect at the start of the day. They are being forced to show a little bit of what they've got here, but really there's not much to do against it. Optic seem to have hit the wall. They, they've come up with some ideas. They've tried to get things going for themselves, but none of it's really sticking or landing. Especially when Fallen's doing that. Naf in real trouble. Fire <laughs> coming in. Please, just leave me alone. He screams. He does find Fallen, but 10 HP oh and God, he's a dream. Yeah. Somehow. Stays up. Somehow. And that's going to be, that allows them to get another solid buy going on. I mean, terex has got 6,300. Mixwell's right around that same amount. They can get another double up setup. They can have a bunch of utility. It's just one of these rounds at some point needs to have success. They, they can't keep letting these bleed away. And they certainly, they're, it's in a fashion where they're not even putting up a fight at this point. They're yeah. losing the bomb sites too quickly. They don't have a read of what's coming. SK is completely outplaying them. Yeah, it looks like a fallback to that initial B hit. Very well rounded. Very strong. We saw Tarek deal with it a couple of times, but a misread again. Naf's off. He's, he's having a look towards A. Oh, God. L listen, it's, it's, it looks silly to us because we get everything, but it's so much mm -hmm. more difficult to play against when a team has shown you so many different looks. They've shown you fast towards A. They've shown you fast towards drop, slow towards... They've shown you just a little bit of everything, enough that you're questioning every, every decision you make. Mixwell's now rotated over towards the B bomb site. Not playing from Chicken Coop this time. He's going to be at statue. The clock is ticking, isn't it? One minute, five seconds. Slow play out from Fallen here, being cautious with it. Nice flash, though. That blinds two. Russian Tarek wincing through it, but Fallen finding a little bit of room to look here. See if anyone's willing for it. And oh, my word. Molly comes in. Oh, the connection is perfection. Mixwell. It's punished, and Fur looks to join in on the action. As they all look towards danger, no one there. Taco's going to play up towards the platform. Ooh, the nice flash set up there. Allows Tarek to actually have a shot at this. But Phelps, in the meantime, is already doing work. And again, every kill is traded favorably towards SK. I yeah, know Fur just quietly walks out drop. Oh, no. Timing isn't with them. Looks the wrong way. Naf gets there just in time. 25 seconds left. Fallen's going to start making his move, but he's not aware. Rush is in the open. Little bit of a blunder from SK. Can they recover from it? Cold Zero, long range spray. Can't find the kill, but Phelps helps him out. Naf's got to be close up with this AWP. There's the pistol. Down into a one on one. Four to nine. Optic really need this one. Naf, what have you made of, my man? This is incredible scenes, and the bomb's planted. You can't just run away, Naf. You've got to play back into this. It is the 1v1. It's him against Phelps. 
And Phelps gets the bomb plant and he finds an angle. He commits. Naf on shore. Has to find every single pixel out of place. And Phelps merely waited perfectly. Yeah, that was sick. Holding that angle as well. If that's not an instantaneous kill, Naf's got a chance to respond and maybe gets that one. But beautiful stuff from SK. It all looks so great. They were all playing... Optic, again, that, that whole round, Optic was so confused where the hit was actually coming from, but yep. Rush almost able to bring it back in. And now it's desperate times, isn't it? Scout, Max 7, the Famas on Hayes, one kit on Naf. It's dire. Oh, the fans are still trying, bless them. They're still trying to cheer. <laughs> but you're watching Optic getting crushed, being pushed down to what SK feel is amicable. At 11 to 4, probably in a moment's time, it's been a very harsh half. Unless they can deny it here, 5 10, it's, it's possible. It's not likely, but it's possible. But again, SK have shown so many different looks, so hard to read, so yet to get a handle on, it, on Optic. They, they just, Optic aren't able to get that full read and further this time in drop. The tough part is now they've, they've gone basically completely away from trying to hold drop itself. And actually, this round, it's a Big oversight in this defense because Rush and Tarek have to split their attention among both ways. So this is going to be dicey. Fur's already down. No one's back to look for it. Fur has his choice of which bomb set he wants to go to. He picks A. And both of them are going to be free kills. Huh? Yeah, How? this is. How can this happen? How is he allowed this much freedom? And of course, they, they, they'll find every opportunity. If they find a weakness, they are going to press and press hard. And great knowledge from SK. I mean, with Hayes holding that particular angle, they just say, all right, we know the other defender or two are out towards long, so we're just going to smoke off danger stairs. We're going to run right by you. We're going to put Molotovs in this choke point, and they've got the bomb site. Great read of the game from SK. Phelps waiting up on long here. Cold Zera playing towards middle. Rush, Tarek playing back in through door. Nice shot from Mixwell, but this would need some more of that sort of stuff coming through. Cold Zero is ready and waiting. You can see the boost coming into play. Fur just needs to peek up and down and to see if anyone would dare play through that balcony door, the next possible target. But time is ticking. One kick, getting this on Naf, and well, that's a bit awkward there. Naf able to find Fur, but Fallen stands. Oh! oh what? Exceptional work from Fallen to remove. One of those final bricks away from the green wall of Optic. SK, large and in charge. They had no right winning that with that stack as Optic comes out long. It's just sheer amazement at a Fallen's play in that round that does it. Great half from SK, recovering off a lost pistol round. And they show the full playbook to Optic, who can't handle it. Big half, 11 to 4.
11 to 4 on the half. It's not looking great for Optic right now, but SK showing us why they've been champions on this stage before, why they have that reputation, and how far they're willing to go. Yeah, just five more rounds for oh, the semifinal. It's gotten worse. Oh, good lord. That's really ballooned, hasn't it? <laughs> All right. Well, pistol round is at hand. It'd be an understatement to say that Optic needs it and Furs there, as always, to just crush dreams. We talked a lot about hope in this this series. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's not a whole lot left. It's got to be right now, and Furs already shut down one. Oh, that's a good response, though. Rush is here, and Optic goes as he goes, but Fallen responds again. Some magical shots over at this A bomb site. Garrett can be a big difference maker here. They come leaping towards him. He didn't expect the fall from Taco to land so cleanly, but NAF contains the situation to a degree with the bomb planted. Hayes takes a crazy fight. You don't win that against USPS. Back away, he falls off. And now Fallen gets a chance to have his say. Get to hand, smoke to play. First bit of contact. Tag, tag comes down, but Hayes. Good peek from Hayes as well from the side that Fallen's not expecting whatsoever. He's thinking it's going to be wider, but Hayes surprises him a little bit, so Optic just barely hang on to that. You can see some of those shots coming out. Looked like SK was going to turn it. They didn't want to have anything to do with slow retakes there. They wanted to get into the fight. They've lost. Optic has lost a couple of these, though, throughout mm -hmm. these games. They've got to be careful. Hey, they've won some of them too, but... Yeah. This is this is Fair a little pleasure. bit more... <laughs> this is a little bit more terrifying, though, when you're at 5 to 11 final map here for your tournament life on the line. You have to be that little bit extra careful. Just play it out as a team. Be smart in these rounds. They've shown they can be, to the surprise of some. Not all. Mix well. Begins his play towards platform. Not going to overcommit, though. And Naf and Hayes waiting on the other side of things as well. So Optic aren't rushing this, and SK wait. Which is good, obviously. No reason to play through this smoke. Still over a minute left in the round. Naf sees nothing over towards the A bomb site. Just now picking up the bomb is Hayes. He's going to meet up with the teammates, and now you can see all five starting to converge for a hit. It's going to be Phelps and Taco here. Cold Zero watching drop. It's a pretty spread out defense from SK. No stack. So Molotov out. Now they know it's going to be towards B. They're not going to move a muscle until they have to. Phelps can wait on this. Good initial damage. Mixwell goes down. Rush trades. Now Taco gets the play in. Nade comes through. Doesn't connect. Still four alive here. Make a three. Rush to find Fallen. 35 wow. seconds. No, oh, they're, they're just being mowed down through the smoke, aren't they? Bomb's going to come in. The final two players, Cold Zero and Fur. You haven't got much to play with in this. Great shoulder peek from Rush as well to bait out the shots from Taco. Really, really nice to just make sure he's not in any danger of getting dropped. That would force more bodies to commit towards the site, and then there's a chance. Either way, Optic going to take this second round. Fur is already off on the other side of the map. It's just Cold Zera who's close by. He hasn't moved from this drop zone the whole round. Naf is so scared. He, I think he knows somewhat of what's going on here, and he's right to be scared because... I got a little bit worried, didn't it? Naf's there, luckily, <laughs> to help him out. It's like, please save All me. All part of the plan. <laughs> All intended. Fur will be able to survive, however. And he does have the head armor and all of that jazz to go along with it. So why not keep it alive? You're not going to have much more coming into the next round, so worth an attempt to put it into play. This time, I don't think SK is going to invest a whole lot. They still got Furs CZ. He's got armor as well. He's got a smoke. Maybe something tricky you can do with that. Let's see where he goes then. I'd imagine this is a little bit more, a, a little bit more aggressive for Optic Gaming. They can be more decisive about it, can't they? They know they're in such a bad predicament now. No armor, so you get the plane from the Mac 10, you get the plane from the UMP. As long as they're not complacent, they should be completely fine. Yeah, and actually, I mean, this uh, you can't really criticize this either. This is the same as the last round set up in the default. Make sure there's no crazy business. Not wanting to hamstring yourself in this half by just losing one of these rounds for no reason. Bit of information gathered from Phelps. I think he spots out two. Here come the nades. Yeah, here comes the lineup. Let's see the motion's gone through. You have to be quite meticulous in this. It's not quite it's not as easy as people think to check every angle 
cleanly. It's a little bit, you know, patchworky at the moment. There's four players here. There's chicken coop. There's a boost. There's a lot of things to worry about. And this could get play, and it does. Fur from above. Rains down. Fire. That's two big kills. But there's the response finally. Still two players alive for SK. You can cause a little bit of bother. No initial bomb bomb just yet. And now they can go for it. Maybe feeling more secure now. Ah, there was a small chance there. You felt it possibly coming in. But either way, Tarek, great round from him. Three kills with the Galil. Optic going to climb a little bit closer. 7 to 11. You've got some believers out there. That was a sick shot from Purdy. Yeah, there was really nice. there's that always believers, out. aren't there? You used to be one of them, Jason. You used to have such hope. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> many, many years ago. I right? remember those days. <laughs> All right, seven to eleven. It's, it, 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 this is another. You know, this is the big step, really. Though. The buy round, the gun round that comes in. The up on fallen. The five man play towards a fallen and furry. You get the brunt of this if they continue down this road. There's no pressure really being applied towards B either. Listen, those two players are probably the, the two you'd like to take the brunt of any kind of hit. Smoke up in danger stairs. Fallen's going to rotate back. So is Fur. Very, very quickly. And the hit's already on. The rotation's already on. Everyone's going to be here. Fallen just waiting for the jump up. Fur's going to get two. There's Fallen chiming in. That stopped so cold. Yeah, that just crumpled, didn't it? It was like the impact zone. It just fell apart. There was, it was, I don't know what the plan was. Just run up middle, hope for the best. Assume no one's there. Hazed, you're willing to put up the performance of your life to get past this? Nah. Tarko takes the fight and takes the round. Uh, you're hoping that you can you can beat the rotation over from the B bomb site. You're hoping you can get the smokes up and the choke points before the B players arrive. The tough part is Fur with these two kills kind of buys them an extra few seconds and then fall and add. I mean, when you lose the first three players in any hit, I mean, the chances of you winning it are just not very good. I mean, just a great response from Fallen and Fur. It was, it was really surprising how quick Cold Zero was as well to get over towards that side. It was so instantaneous. That, 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 that's just a lot of trust in the call, right? Also, I mean, the fact that Fur and Fallen have been so pushed up at long A halls pretty much tells them there's, there's no pressure coming from A halls. In order to do that, someone from Optic would have had to run through their own smoke up the danger stairs. And that's just not a very likely situation. So at that point in the defense, you're just kind of playing the odds, saying that that'd just be too crazy to consider it. And both getting back, both having this crossfire set up that Optic wasn't expecting. So far, the only one to really exchange bullets. Ooh, Fallen finds Haze. Where was that? I guess Haze was trying to encroach towards middle and Fallen watching it from danger again. I guess he didn't get much threat from that. It was just a smoke that put him out of it last time around. And he fell back perfectly. So, already not the best of beginnings here for Optic into this round. Or are you going to sacrifice Haze? And the three players on that B site just sitting in pretty patiently more than anything. Yeah, there's just not a whole lot they can do. SK is running a little bit low on some of the utility to block off choke points during an execution, but it's all towards this B bomb site. Where's Rush got himself? He's down drop. That's pretty creative. Well, not that creative, but it is kind of cool. Flashbang over right off the ledge. Here come the hits. Utility being used. Cold gets one. Nice trade, but Taco's there to back him up. And yeah, again, the brunt of these attacks from Optic is just getting destroyed. They can't make any progress. Even when the trades do come out, they've made no, no real movement towards the bomb site. Yeah, the headway's just not there. It's it's hard to watch because it looks like they almost have a shot at it, and then he just gets ripped away. Naf needs to kind of get done in this one, and he does. There it goes. SK Gaming grinding the gears towards getting towards those semifinals now, and here's the pause from Optic. A real, I, I guess, almost final chance at trying to find a new way to make this count. Yeah, this is tough. He's not expecting that whatsoever. Quick shot from Fallen. And yeah, that's pretty much one last chance for Optic, right? And once it starts extending to this much of a lead, you just we, we saw it on cash. Even though Optic makes a great run, at some point, SK's going to find a way to win a round. Can't let him get up this big. And Optic's got to figure it out. And they don't have a lot of money to play with either. I mean, the economy, Mixwell's going to buy up. He'll have an AK, but everyone else is going to be stuck on Tech 9, some upgraded pistols. They'll have utility, but there's not a whole lot of arsenal to fight with. No, the unpause comes in. Maybe a small adjustment on the fly, but at the moment, I've got to say, as, as good as Optic can be, they, they do have those moments where it goes right. It just doesn't feel like they, they quite have it all written down yet on that T side here in Cobble. Not to the SK standard. As much as the crowd can cheer, it doesn't seem to make a blind bit of difference to what's going on in the server at the moment. They've been, they've been, they've been behind those guys. They've been trying to make this happen, but Optic need to make it work for themselves. They have been uh, doing their best. I appreciate it. Maxwell's going to lead the way, and he has to be a hero. AK-47. 
Phelps just on the other side. Colts Aaron Taco as well here. It's a staggered defense. There's three, basically four players here. Furs right outside drop. Mixwell blind. He has no idea where anyone is. There's a smoke shooting his teammates. There's one behind him this whole time. Phelps waiting to pounce. Now he makes his move. It's perfect. He gets two. He's going to add one more into it. And again, the attack is shut down. Clever play from Phelps inside the smoke. And there's nothing left. Tarek in a one on three. The smoke disappears. And Phelps completes the domination. What a play. It seems like wherever you go, there's one player from SK who can just completely dismantle them one by one. And all that hope, all that wanting, doesn't mean you're going to do anything with it. Phelps, so well played, so patient too. Didn't just you know instantly come out and try and do it once that contact was made. No, he waited for the right time to come out and take the fight. Yeah, just, just another way. I mean, there, there's, it's almost like the, the execution that, that Optic puts out confuses them. They're lost in the smokes. Not really sure. Mixwell, you could see, not used to perhaps being that player who's jumping out first. Didn't really know the best route to take to find that first kill. And obviously, no one seeing Phelps amid, amidst being, you know, half blind. A little bit of smoke covering their vision. Just a confusing situation. And this is going to be extremely confusing and frustrating all on its own. And everyone from Optic is dying through smoke. Run away from the men who can shoot us very well through smoke. Phelps is still after it. Plenty of bullets to work with, why not? Tarek and Naf looking for other options, but you can already see first time to consider that being a possibility. There's, there's no way out of this sort of game. Even in these rounds, you're not finding windows of opportunity. You're just getting corralled around. And SK wait to get that 15th on the board. They they know it's moments away. I think even Optic might do as well now. Yeah, it does, it does feel a little bit like it. Not that they've necessarily given up, but just more no. that they've, you know, accepted it, right? This round, I mean, even just three remaining players, not a lot of hope that you'd be doing anything successful in this round anyways, but everyone's spread out. Trying to create some kind of fake, it looks for Naf to sneak up towards long A to get a bomb plant, but that's just not going to work. Spotted out. Fallen takes a little bit of damage. He doesn't like that. He goes back for more. Taco's there to help him out. 15th for SK. Series point, SK on the verge of the semifinals of ESL1 Cologne. SK Gaming know what's in front of them. They've been here before, they've done it before. They've gone all the way before. And they want it again. What stands in the way is five Optic players. Good purchase from Optic this time. But will that make a blind bit of difference? Hey, he's already going to have a little look here. Fur this time, not going to find anything for free. Molly smokes, considered. Tarek still playing over by B, but you can see Cordero straight away towards A. Yeah, this is uh, perhaps a little bit of trying to get in front of a change in strategy for the SK side of things. They've stopped plenty of attacks over towards the B bomb site, so... Believing this is going to be a little bit more pressure towards the A bomb site. Fallen has the angle with the AWP, sees the flash coming. Still gets blinded by it, even though he changes position. Has to grab a new angle. Has to hear these footsteps as well. How quick is he? Extremely quick. That's an easy answer, isn't it? Smoke goes up. Optic find the approach even more difficult now. They were going to go for what looked like an A split, but that's been hampered so early on. Phelps is still watching for that playthrough drop. And this, oh wow, Mixwell, how do you hit that? Jumping through, still lands it. This becomes a little more viable, but they're not liking it. They feel there's something afoot. They're going back over towards B. Yeah, this is great. Phenomenal mid-round call, but the danger is Terex all alone with the bomb, and Taco keeps pushing up. If he wins this duel, it could be all over. Terex got nothing in his hands. He's got a nade. That's the bomb down. Optic have to recover. 35 seconds left. The clock becomes a factor now, and SK controls everything. That one kill might have just done it. That might have put this out of what Optic can achieve. They're desperate for this. The smoke goes in. They just want that bomb. They want a chance at it. He's going to try for it. He gets it. And does he get away cleanly? He's being cautious, being careful. He's got support for in the heels. The bomb goes down. 15 seconds. It's all on Mixwell. The 1v4. Is it even possible at this point? Taco will fall, but 10 seconds. It's clock ticking time. And Fur doesn't care about the time left. He wants the job done. And it's SK Gaming to make it to the semifinals. Dominating victory. We saw everything on that last map, especially. The T side was just so, so difficult for Optic to handle. So many different ways for SK to win. But Optic, you have to be a little bit proud if you're Optic coming out of the major qualifier the way they did. Coming in here with absolutely nothing to be positive about and showing that, I mean, obviously, there's some issues in the team, but they could still compete. They've got a lot of talent still. Yeah, that was a, it was a valiant attempt. I'm not, I'm not going to say anything other than that about those guys. They, they fought very, very hard for this. A bounce back tournament for Rush. We've seen Rush be the, the real, uh, you know, the motor for this team at times. 
some of their struggles have been, you know, simultaneous with a little bit of a slump that he's been in. This was bounce back. We saw Tarek have some good games. Saw Mixwell shining still. This Optic team put up a great fight, obviously, through the group stage, surprising everyone. Yeah, I think SK were probably taking a little bit of back off that first map, but by map two and three, things were looking so much smoother. But I think it's time to head onto the stage, and here I can imagine from maybe Fallen next to Paul. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, Fallen, it's, um, it's always great to see you in the winner's enclosure. I love interviewing you, but I guess today you've won, but that's not maybe the performance that you expect of an SK team. Uh, be honest, uh, if we don't celebrate the win, we're pushing us too hard. Uh, Opti did a great tournament, they played super on the group stage. They were very prepared for the first map. Uh, they caught us off guard and played super well the first map. Second map was intense, they almost made the comeback. And the third map, I think we had a good advantage. But I, I don't think that's the feeling. The feeling is mission accomplished, we go to the semifinals, trying to chase the third tournament in a row. Yeah, I mean, I always see you come off, you're always super happy after you win, but today it seems different, you see more kind of serious because maybe you didn't play so well. But talk to me about underestimating teams. We all said, and including Betway, our sponsor here, said, SK, massive favourites in this game. Optic, no, nah, they're not good enough to win this match. Did we all underestimate them? Did you underestimate them? Uh, being honest, no, we didn't underestimate them. Uh, we play against them a lot of times in North America region. We know they're what they're capable of. Uh, and they are super good players. As we have to respect them and play the best game. And of course, if you, if you take in consideration what each team has achieved, you're going to say they were favorites. But on Counter-Strike, it's the next match that matters. What it did in the past doesn't matter for anything. Yeah, we've made it through to the semifinals again. Is this, is this a lucky cathedral of Counter-Strike? Is it like where, where you love playing? Yeah, Cologne is something special. Uh, SK is here. The, yeah. Our office is yeah. actually in Cologne, so we were very familiar with staying here. And Lanxys Arena is one of the best places to play Counter-Strike. I have been here to watch the hockey games, and I think it's way better on Counter-Strike. <laughs> okay, you've got a lot of fans down here. They're all cheering you on. They'll continue to cheer you tomorrow. You got anything for them? Uh, guys, thanks for cheering. Thanks for the support. We have like the ultras from SK right there. Everyone cheering home. We'd like to thank you guys for your love. And let's keep strong for next tomorrow. Against FaZe is going to be a good match. All right, thanks. We'll look forward to that tomorrow. Don't go anywhere. We've still got more to come from Alex, the machine, and the panel. We'll see them next.
Ah, ladies and gentlemen, the day has finished. We have our teams locked in, four left in for the semi-finals of ESL One Cologne, and these are the guys and dolls who have been talking through it. That's a song. It's Nailed a, it. It's a musical. <laughs> yeah. All according to plan. Yeah. You've got to stay politically <laughs> correct at all times. I'd be very offended. She would. I mean, yeah, I know Lauren very well. Just yeah, just instantly. full on triggered. Um, <laughs> joining me, of course, for one last discussion is, is the, the optic hype train himself. Um, <laughs> That's what he calls himself, actually. Yeah, on, yeah, a, on a daily room, basis. Like, yeah. He's like, hey guys, Optic Hype Train here. That's actually how you describe yourself, right? The yeah. good old OHT. It's in, my, uh, it's in all my social media profiles. Oh, it is? Yeah. Be sure to check it out at On Fire Moses. Uh, guys, nice. that was an adventure. SK versus FaZe tomorrow. I think that's where I just want to kind of leave with you. you that, that, just knowing that that's going to be a treat for you guys to indulge in one way or another. Lauren? Yeah, it's, it's a tantalizing prospect, isn't it? It's, it's a great game. They're going to be able to go back. It's the second semi-final of the day as well, yeah. so they have time to prepare for this. But these two know each other pretty well by now. You know what to expect. But mm. both teams having very different roads here. FaZe looking very good throughout for the vast majority. One, they'll slip up when they weren't quite in the right mental state. It felt Nico sure. fell off. But beyond that, you know, looking incredibly good. SK, you, you dropped a map to Optic. There's some, you know, bumps in the road, but they closed mm. out in the end. I don't think I've ever been this close to you, Jason, when the cameras are rolling. <laughs> It's, just, it's like HD. It's that actually one really time. intense. Oh, that one time. Yeah. That band camp. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, ECS rematch, phase SK, a lot of people describe it as kind of a, a grand final before a grand final. Yeah, that's probably the best way to do it, isn't it? It, it really is. And it's also the final boss for phase. It feels like they haven't yeah. really had a whole lot of success. I feel like there's like this triangle in Counter-Strike where um, phase can beat Astralis. Astralis can beat SK, yeah. and SK just destroys phase. Like phase still hasn't figured out how to beat them. And if, if phase wants to be, they have that number one title in the world at the moment in yeah. terms of like accomplishments, but it feels like you can't really put them there until they're able to finally best SK. No, absolutely. That triangle is something we'll keep in mind. And talking of triangles, in the words of Alt-J, let's tessellate over to the analyst desk. I'm going to go for a stroll. <laughs> that is Pansy and Moses. They hate me, but they love me. And these guys have a similar vibe as well. We wanted a strong segment to close the night, Alex. Excuse me, I f that felt strong as We're going to go anything. dancing after this like we've been doing in all the, uh, in all the bumpers. Dude, uh, we are knowing that song inside and out by now. We get like a little dubstep dance going on. More drum and bass. You should see this guy at a rave. You're right, you wanted strong and steady, didn't you? Strong and stable, hashtag... UK politics. Um, Yanko, <laughs> let's do this. Yes, Alex, please, let's do this. You said the scene was set from the start. SK to take this one. Optic, a hiccup uh, for SK on that first map. And I do think that this, whilst expected result, does leave us with some real credit to be given to the North Americans as they depart the tournament. Yeah, I mean, it's unfortunate that we only see this performance now after months and months of yeah. struggle for Optic. And it seems like it did take for, for them to have an abysmal result uh, at the major qualifier, being 0-3 and three, to really, you know, just try and have some fun, let go of pressure, yeah. improvise and so forth, and, and let their individual skill come into light. So I don't know. I, I still don't think that this team can do much with sure. this roster. I think the lack of leadership is apparent. I don't think Tyreek can be a long-term in-game leader. I, I think this was more a one-off. Yeah. So a lot of questions for Optic uh, after the player break. And a coach won't soften the blow? It, it might fix things a little bit, right? But will Hayes be that fifth man? Will they change right. it up now that they don't need him as the in-game leader? Uh, th obviously, you know, you would assume that Tarek is probably just calling stuff they already have in their arsenal. He may be calling some stuff like right. on the fr free-flowing, but it looked like the set strategies is stuff that they've been doing before. It wasn't all on the fly. They did that A execute where they went right. up mid, and you saw that SK knew exactly how to react. A couple of rounds later, they did the B execute, and SK like, we've seen all this before, boys. You know, you're going to have to throw something new at us to catch us out here. And you saw Fallen in that interview at the end there. He means business now. They were obviously disappointed with the way that that series went, but yeah. obviously they turned it around and they, uh, they got what they wanted, made it to the semis, and they've got a huge match coming up. A huge match, and you can see it with our brackets. We've got just four teams left here at ESL 1 Cologne. The Lancaster will be raising the roof for Natus Vincere versus Cloud9. Jeez Louise. FaZe Clan versus SK. A North American team, previously unable to make playoffs, has made the semi-finals. Excitement is certainly starting to grow. They got to kind of experience some of it, especially the players, some of that big stage feel here in Cologne for the very first time. And it's, it's going to be so, so damn fun. And now one man who's been having a whale of a time in that Lanxess. It's loud and it's intimidating. Even now, as the crowd departs and will be returning tomorrow, let's see if Stun has managed to grab a straggling fan.
Uh, grabbing a straggling fan. I'm not so sure about that, Alex, but we are absolutely having a whale of a time down here in the arena on the floor. Starting to thin out now. People going back to their hotels, getting ready to come back tomorrow for what's sure to be a more packed day. Uh, full of action as we go into the semifinals. SK and Optic going to three maps, and with that being said, Optic unable to close it out, but they should certainly not hold their heads low. They had a great showing here at this event. SK going to go on and play phase in the, in the uh, I believe it'll be the second semifinal tomorrow, and then on the other side of the bracket, we've got a rematch in Navi and Cloud9. So I'm going to encourage you all at home to stay involved in those polls by using hashtag ESL1 on your favorite social media, as well as heading over to shop.eslgaming.com and picking up your favorite merch. And on that note, let's take a look at some of the social media coming out of the event today as I do throw it back over to you, Alex. Thanks very much, Trey. Yes, it was an action-packed day, and I, it's... When you end an action-packed day, there's only one thing to say, and that's what's the play of the day. Hey, wouldn't you say? Boys. Hooray. Hooray. The play of the day. And that is a play of the day. Oh, we had a, a parkour backflip, uh, no-scope 360. Commando roll. Douche. Dude, now, that's essentially what I do when I play matchmaking. I wish I was that athletic. Yeah, no, me too, man. I watched a 20-minute uh, tutorial on how to do a backflip yesterday. Did you try? Nah. Uh. The guy did it, though. He learned how to do it in six hours. A very busy bee, Alex, for the <laughs> tournament, I see. <laughs> Doing a lot of preparation in your free time. 20 okay. minutes spent on learning how to do a backflip. That was right. a breakfast. Yeah. Thank you, Chad. It was my breakfast backflip lesson. Known God, you guys, you don't use your breakfast time for... Known to be punctual, our friend Alex is. Known to nap, our friend Yanko. And banter the aside... Buses are coming out <laughs> right. Take the gloves off. Jeez, I'm in the middle of this. I'm so sorry, babe. Let's get out of there. This has been another fantastic day. Talking about video games and, of course, for the guys in the stadium as well. You guys at home, we hope you had the wild ride we did as we watched Optic Gaming and that pain train depart the station. We will be back tomorrow. Those are your semi-finalists of ES. Cell One Cologne 2017. Natus Vincere, Cloud9, FaZe Clan, and SK will clash tomorrow in the historic venue.